In these examples, we're going to generate equivalent expressions by combining like terms. So like terms are any terms that have the same variables and the same exponents on those variables. So here we have 3x and 5x and 2x. So they each just have an x together. So they're going to be considered like terms. And we're going to combine them by just doing operations on their coefficients. So the numbers out in front. So here we have 3x. And we're going to add 5x. And we're going to add 2x to that. So when you're struggling with like terms, you can always think of apples. And this is how I teach it a lot. Three apples plus five apples plus two apples. And your variables can just be apples or any kind of object that you want them to be. But three of them plus five more of them makes eight of them. And then two more of them makes ten of them. So we're going to say 10x for our answer here. Be very careful not to change the variable itself. You're not changing the apples into apples squared or apples cubed. Uh, that doesn't make sense. So the variables stay the same, only the coefficients get added or subtracted. So in this first example, we have 10x. In this next example, we have 3m plus 2m plus m. So the coefficient on this first one is 3. I have 3m's. In the next one, I have 2m's. But how many m's do I have here? Well, it just says plus m. So if there is no coefficient in front of your term, it's understood to be a 1. So in this case, we'll have 3m's plus 2m's, and 3 plus 2 is 5, plus one more m is 6. So it's going to be 6m's, because again, these are just objects we're adding, like saying, I don't know, 3 oranges plus 2 oranges plus one more orange is going to be 6 oranges. But in our case, we have m, so don't change the variable. The variable just uh, comes along. So 3 plus 2 plus 1 will be 6. In this third example, we have 4d minus 2d plus 5d. So we notice again, all of them are d's, so they're all like terms. So we're just going to operate on their coefficients. So 4 minus 2 is 2, plus 5 is 7. And since they're all d's, I'm just going to put 7d right there, 7d. In this fourth example, I have 10a minus a minus a. So remember in a previous example, we said that if there is not a coefficient stated in front of a variable, it's understood to be 1. So I'm going to slip a 1 right there and a 1 right there. And this is an a, and this is an a, and this is an a. So they're all going to be like terms, because they each have just a single a with them. So we're going to operate on their coefficients alone. So 10 minus 1 is 9, minus 1 is 8. So it's going to be 8a when we simplify this expression. So in this example, we have multiple variables. It looks like we have x's and y's. So everything with just a single x is going to be a like term. It looks like we have 4x and then we have a minus x. So once again, remember, if there's not a number specified in front, that's understood to be a 1. And it looks like we could do the same for the y over here is by himself, so just 1y. So here's what I'm going to do. For like terms, I'm going to underline them with a single underline here. So 4x minus 1x, so 4 minus 1 is 3x. And then my y's, I'm going to underline with two underlines just so I can keep them separate. So we have positive 2y plus 1y, so 2 plus 1 will be 3y, and since it's positive, I'll put that plus sign right there. So for this fifth example, we have 3x plus 3y when we combine the x's together and then the y's together separately. In the sixth and final example, I have uh, a's and b's all over here. So I'm going to put a single underline under everything that has an a, and I'm going to put uh, two underlines under everything that has a b. In that way, we can keep our like terms separate. So I'm going to run through here, and I see that some terms don't have coefficients stated. So I'm going to go ahead and slip a 1 in front of everything that doesn't have uh, an explicit uh, coefficient. So let's talk about my a's first. I have two a's, and then I'm going to minus 1a. So 2 minus 1 is 1, 
and then minus 1. Oh, I'm going to minus, so 1 minus 1 is 0. So should I indicate it with 0a, or should I just put a? Well, if 2 minus 1 is 1, minus 1 more is 0, then I have no a's at all. So I'm not even going to write anything down here because there aren't any A's left, so I don't need to name them at all. So my B's are the other ones, so 1B plus 3B, so 1 plus 3 is 4, 4, and then plus 2B is 4 plus 2 is 6. So I'm going to have 6B for my answer for my final example when I combine those like terms. So just remember, if all the coefficients cancel out and you have 0, like we had with our A's, then don't write anything down for your A's. Don't even don't even list him there. He's just there's nothing there.